How's it going everybody? And welcome to another cut control video where we're going to be talking about how to move the machine around and get it to do exactly what we want it to do. So we have it started off here. I got a program loaded in and the G54 is set up and we have our tool here ready to be moved around, waiting orders, instructions. Let's give it some. So we'll come over here to the right side of our screen here. And what we're going to start off with here is we're going to start off with our direction controls. So we have our X axis, our Y axis, and our Z. If we look over on our screen, these are represented by these lines. This is our zero position set up by our work coordinates and our program. And what it is, is we have our X direction, our Y, our Z. Now it's easy to think of things as, you know, left to right, forward to back, and up and down, but everything depends on perspective. So if we move this around, suddenly this is left and right. This is forward and back, that's up and down. So if I were to turn this around, suddenly the Y direction is left and right and X is forward and back. This can even change for Z. Mm, there, suddenly Z is front and back, X is back to left and right, and now Y is up and down. So really what you gotta pay attention to is you gotta pay attention to positive and negative directions. And it's, it'll take a little while to get the hang of it, but eventually it'll just become second nature. So I have X negative and positive, Y positive and negative, and Z positive and negative. So those are the directions in which our tool can travel. Now that we have our directions sorted out, we're gonna go on to jog speed. Now jog speed is pretty straightforward. You have your rapid, which is good, great. Everyone loves to go fast, save time and money. But next thing you gotta think about is, well, why would I wanna slow things down? You know, why would I move at 25 inches a minute when I could just wrap it everywhere where I want to go? Well, let's say that we wanted to touch off the top of our part. So let's come to our front side of the view and zoom in a little bit. And let's touch off the top. We'll come down in Z nice and slow. Oh, oh, too late. Come down with our tool. We've crashed into our part and now we're officially having a bad day. So let's back this up a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to slow things down. We're going to have our jog speed set at 10 rather than 100. And we're going to come in nice and slow with our Z. And we can get surprisingly close even without having to slow things all the way down. And now we're ready to touch off. So let's come back up. And another thing if we want to take things in, take things easy and slow, is we can come up to our jog step. So jog step controls how much or how far the tool is going to move with one click of the button. So if I change this to 10 thou, every click of the Z axis is going to come down 10 thousandths. If I change it to 100 thou, every click is going to move down 100 thou. So I can get really close to the top of my part, even if I change it to 1, it'll move 1 thousandths at a time. So I'm clicking, 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 and then 5 tenths, clicking, 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 all those clicks only move me but 2 thou. And so this is a really great way to really fine tune things, these things in. And if you have a controller in your hand, you can actually lean into the machine and you can see just where it's gonna touch at. And it gives you so much flexibility and so easy to use. Now we're all done, so I'm gonna go to continuous and I'm just gonna gently ease my way out and then I'm gonna wrap it out. So it's such a really, very flows very easily. It's a very easy system to learn and to use. And if I wanted to maybe face off my part a little bit, I'll come back to our front view. Our, I like front view because to me, this is very natural. Every, everything's left and right, or excuse me, right and left. You can't really see front and back because of the perspective, but up and down is also the same. So my positive and negative directions make sense to me here. And so I'm gonna move over. And let's say I want to make a, like a sixth out pass or something. And so I'm going to move my digital readout, my DRO, and let's say I want to start at negative 0.5, and so I'll move over a couple thou at a time, and then 10, and then a half thou. There, and now I'm set exactly where I want to be just by moving my jog step rather than trying to move it in continuously. And then I can also type in. 
six inches for every button of, that I press. And then for jog speed, let's say I want to go something goofy like 37 inches a minute. So now whenever I press X, there it goes at 37 inches a minute, moving across the top of my part. So I can type things in and really like customize how I want to move this machine. And now like, okay, let's, let's bring it down and let's touch it off the top of my part. And uh, oh, oh, uh, there it goes and goes and goes and goes and then stops. So that's the one thing you have to really be careful about when using jog step is that it, this machine for as brilliant as it is and as accurate as it is, it's just like any other CNC machine where it will try to do exactly what you tell it to do. So if you tell it to bury itself six inches down, it will do its best. It will try its hardest to bury itself and it will not be a pretty picture. So let's wrap it up back out. And try to remember when you, if you're using jog step like this to always, whenever you do a big move like this, especially six inches or anything long that can crash down, as soon as you're done with your move, flip it over to something that's a little bit more safe, a little more comfortable like 10 thou. That way, just in case you do hit your Z, it moves just a nice safe distance. So that is our kind of manual jogging like this. We have a couple automatic cycles that are built into cut control here that you can use for MR1. One is if we jump over here to the left, we have our go to G540. Now that can be G550, that can be G560. Just basically whichever, whichever zero you have set up and whatever coordinate system you are in, you can click a button to go to its home position, to go to its zero position. So this will take me exactly to X, Y, zero. And now if I hit Z, it'll go down to Z zero. So my tool will then be at my zero position. We have it broken up into two different X, Y, and then Z. We have it broken up into two different selections. So that way, just in case you do want to just move the X and Y amount, that way your tool is not gonna come down at an angle and maybe hit a part as it's coming across. And that way, just in case your Z zero is set below your part, it's not gonna come crashing in. And so I usually bring it up above the part, then I zero it, then I bring it down in Z. So just nice little um, quality of life things that we can get with MR1 here. And that's about all our manual controls. And so you're pretty much on your way to start playing around, start cutting, not burying the tool six inches down to the part or your, your machine, which is very important. Uh, always keeping an eye on which way is positive and negative. So get out there, feel free to play around, uh, make sure all your zeros are set, make sure all your speeds are great and you'll have a great time. If you like this video, keep an eye out for our next one where we're going to be going over how to use these, everything we've just learned here to manually machine whatever we want to do while keeping everything at nice even speed and a nice perfect amount with our DRO, as well as a few tips and tricks on cutters and materials. So I'll see you guys in the next one.